the Army Galassi and 32 ACP. Let's check it out. You know, with all vintage guns, or used guns for that matter, you don't know really what to expect. And so, you know, the reason they're selling them, maybe it's just an heirloom piece. Uh, maybe the quality is not there. But I'll tell you what, the little Army Galassi 32 ACP, sweet little shooting gun, a lot of fun at the range, low recoil, and it just is a beautiful Italian design. The Army Galassi 32 ACP, or 7.65 caliber. Uh, these were produced in Italy uh, around the turn of the century. In fact, they started producing firearms around 1910. And this is actually based very similar to the Browning 1910. One of the biggest differences is that it doesn't have a grip safety uh, and a couple of other features internally. But these were really closely related. And of course, the Browning 1910 was a very popular handgun. But this little Italian company made a number of different pistols all the way up until 1970. Uh, and then it was bought out by his son, and it went by the name Rig Army, R-I-G-A-R-M-I, uh, and they produced pistols up until the 90s. Uh, one of the big reasons why these pistols ceased to be imported into the U.S. was because of the 1968 Gun Control Act, which limited the size of pistols, and actually anything under a certain dimension was restricted for coming into the United States. So it's one of the reasons why that uh, Army Galassi went out of business and because its primary market was the U.S. Now I just recently did a review and a lot of these are going to be common uh, with the same features that came with this little 25 ACP by Army Galassi. Um, you know, and I did a review. I'll have a link right here for you to look at or down in the description below. Uh, but this is one of the 25 or the 6.35 caliber. And uh, these are great little shooting guns. In fact, I really enjoyed shooting this pistol. I mean, it was just a breeze, and it just fed ammo like crazy. Uh, and fairly accurate for the sights that it had on there. But these are all steel frame pistols. And, you know, even though at the time they were fairly inexpensive, uh, by today's standards, these would be fairly expensive to reproduce. So we want to safety check the pistol, but when we do, I want to talk a little bit about this magazine release. And of course, it's the Hill style, which is was very prominent in Europe. Uh, we have a an eight round steel magazine with a little finger grip here, and it's funny because it definitely is a different color than the grips themselves. And we'll go ahead and safety check to make sure the gun is unloaded. This is a striker fire design, and we're going to look at that when we break it down. Uh, but it does have a fixed barrel design, which makes it fairly accurate. Uh, a lot like the Walther PPKs and a lot of other blowback actions uh, that are very similar to this. Army Galassi made models in 22 short, 22 long, 22 long rifle, 380, and of course 32 ACP. Now, from all my research, this one I figured is the model 512, uh, but there's not a whole lot of information about these pistols out on the market. I mean, it it took a lot of digging to find out uh, what I did find. Uh, but one of the things about these, there were a lot of these that were imported into the United States, so there are a lot of these guns out there. Uh, one of the ways to find out the date is right here behind the trigger guard, uh, the Roman numerals, and even some of them had dates. But um, this is the X511, which, and I'm going to have the list down below in the description where you can check your serial number or this little number for the date. And this one happens to be 1961. Uh, the date on the 25 happened to be 1962. It was uh, 18, and this one is coming up at 17. 
Here you can see the marking a little bit better and then of course with proof marks all on here and made in Italy. Of course on this side Army Galassi and then where it was made. This is actually made in the same uh, town as Beretta. And I'm sure Beretta inspired a lot of manufacturing companies during that time, being the oldest firearm company in the world. This does feature a three and a half inch barrel. Again, it is a blowback design. It's six and a quarter inches in total length. It's four inches in height. And it's seven eighth inches, or just a little over three quarter of an inches in width. It's a very slim trim pistol, really made uh, to fit in your pocket for concealed carry. But one of the things about it, because it is an all steel frame, it's fairly hefty at 23 and a half ounces. So you know, it's you've got it. You know that it's in your pocket, uh, and especially if you're handling a lot of polymer frame pistols, uh, this definitely belies the weight. But during that time, this was a fairly lightweight pistol. The trigger pull on this, and you can pull it back, and of course we've seen that it's unloaded. It is not a bad trigger pull. There's a little bit of take up, and then a little crisp break. Uh, but, using my trigger pull gauge, I was getting about the 9 pound mark. But really, it belies the trigger pull, because it's so crisp. And, uh, and you know, at the range, and with all the stuff going on, um, it's really a pleasure to shoot this little pistol. Really smooth shooting little pistol. Uh, the 380 ACP was very little recoil. It was shooting perfectly, probably the first 50, 75 rounds. I started having a couple of hangups when I was doing some rapid fire. Uh, and so, you know, that's just a uh, part of it. And I think, uh, I don't think it really had to do with the ammunition. It seemed like it was doing fine. So, um, and after that, I didn't have any shots after that that were, you know, any kind of malfunction. The safety is very positive right here, and it does lock the frame down. Here, here, it locks it down. The serrations themselves are very aggressive, but as you can see, they kind of concave. They kind of dip in a little bit, and it really makes it a natural way to grab hold of it and to be able to pull it with your fingers. Uh, one of the things about the last round is this magazine does hold the slide open. Uh, and I did notice that at times it would hold open, a few times it didn't. Uh, but, you know, it does, this is a good feature, especially for the little blowback designs. I know the little 25 did not. Um, when you held the slide back, it did not lock with the magazine. There seems to be a market for these parts. If you look on Gun Broker, uh, I found a number of different pistols and parts. Uh, and, you know, it's just according to when you look. Because these pistols are not extremely expensive. Uh, in fact, because there's just not really a lot of collector value for these. I guess because there were so many that came into the country. Uh, in fact, as I stated on my earlier video, my buddy found this in a house that he bought, uh, just packed away. And so, uh, you know, he just handed it to me and said, hey, let's check it out. And that's really what started it with this one. So I got on Gun Broker, found this one, and uh, purchased it because, you know, I was really intrigued by the 25. Um, you know, a lot of them will. And, of course, here you have a crack right here in the grips. Uh, but the grip still seems to be fairly intact. And the nice white, uh, it's not really an ivory color. It's more of a, a difference between mother of pearl and ivory. Just a nice white plastic type grip. It has more of just a trough, but it does have a V here. And at the tip, it does have a post. And if you really get a good look at it, and really you're shooting this up close, this is a self-defense pistol. But, uh, you know, I got pretty decent accuracy with this pistol. Uh, it was shooting a little bit low, but it definitely was getting them in there in one spot. And when it comes to 32 ACP, for a long time it was a self-defense round used for a number of years. Uh, this is fallen out of favor. There are some companies, kel makes a 32 ACP, Beretta makes one. Uh, but most people are going to the 380 ACP right here. And then of course your 9mm. Then we go down the list to the 25 ACP and then the 22. Uh, one of the advantages the 25 has over the 22 is it's a centerfire caliber and it's a little more reliable than your 22 just because of that but really not a great self-defense round even though people still use it uh, maybe they inherited it maybe that's all they have uh, but that is one thing to consider and of course the 32 but really i would stick more with 380 or 9 millimeter for a really effective self-defense round now this assembly of the pistol is actually pretty simple but it is a lot different than anything i've ever encountered which to be honest with you is pretty intuitive uh, first thing you do is make sure the gun is unloaded. Of course, we've removed the magazine. You want to go ahead and bring the slide back to where the pivot point on your safety. And once you get there, just turn your safety all the way to the rear, and it snaps out the cover that holds in your striker. 
and then it goes forward you bring it up a little bit and then lift it and pull it right out here we have the recoil spring of course the fixed barrel design right here and it, and it does help with accuracy uh, this one has been obviously shot a number of times uh, just from the uh, the wear on the barrel here you can see the feeding ramp is almost just one continuous motion right here and then of course we have this little area right here that retains your striker and uh, this I'm sure that you can punch the uh, safety out and then this will pull out but we're not going to get into all that but you can see that it's a very simple design there's no slide rails or anything the barrel retains this into position and then with this piece holding into the back now here's the striker and it has a little notch that fits right here into this little groove it's just one way that it goes now the trickiest part of reassembly is getting that barrel through the slide in the correct position and making sure that this is pulled out once the barrel flows in just like so then you just bring down your slide like so like that hold that into place bring your slide back to where you can pivot around your safety and then you're back in business and you're ready to go to be honest i was really impressed with this pistol i mean the the finish is kind of worn i mean it's definitely seen better days and uh, again it doesn't have a really high collector value this may be something actually that I may have refinished, and then again, maybe not. I just like the vintage pistols. Uh, I do a lot with polymer frame and all the high-tech stuff, and it's really nice to get back to the classic old-world designs. I mean, eight rounds, you're having to change your magazines pretty regularly, and that really saves you on ammunition. Uh, but it also just kind of brings things, slows it down a little bit. And, you know, as far as collectability, uh, you know, these are not necessarily sought after by really high collectors, but a lot of gun enthusiasts like to build their collections on, you know, some of the smaller pistols and mouse guns and things like that. I'm one of those guys. I, I really enjoy uh, buying up these little pistols and uh, just shooting them every once in a while, and they're just a lot of fun. It really reminds you of the way things used to be where craftsmanship was really at a premium. And, you know, high production just wasn't there. These pistols were made pretty much uh, by hand. I think there were 25 guys that worked in these shops, and they built these pistols, um, of course, on milling machines. But just a really beautiful European uh, craftsmanship that went into this. So the Army Galassi and 32 ACP, thumbs way up. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. You just don't really know what to expect. You don't know what to expect when you're picking up. Okay. Uh, one of the big differences is there is no um, the Army Galassi in 30, the Army Galassi in 7.62, and so you know I'm sure that those were those were. Uh, this is from what now from all the things that I figured. Okay. Oops. Here is the striker. So let's do it again. 